What's up everybody, Adam Elstead here with Straight Yak coming to you from my home. Welcome back to the channel. Now today is a video that is has been requested quite a lot on my channel and it was basically my setup of the 13.5 native Titan, my actual tournament setup. Now granted, um, everything that I have on my kayak is set up for my preference and this isn't sort of a one size fits all sort of thing. You're gonna have to get out there and just try some of these things out. But this video is designed to get you guys an idea of how to possibly set up your native Titans in the future. So with that being said, we got a quick intro to jump into and then we're gonna dive into my tournament setup of the native Titan 13.5 here on Straight Yacked. My name is Adam Elstead and I'm a former USC fighter turned extreme kayak angler. I travel around the country fishing fast tournaments out of kayaks. So if you like kayaking and you like fishing, then welcome to Straight Yak. All right, guys, welcome back. So like I said, um, this video was designed for people who want to get an idea of how to set up their native Titan 13.5. Now, before I get any further, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. That helps me out a ton. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, a lot of the things that I do on this kayak is preference only. This is something that has worked for me and it's for my opinion only how I fish, how I uh, generally, you know, uh, find comfortable out on the water. Anyways, you guys are going to have your own way to do things and this isn't a one size fit all. So if you see something that you think you've got uh, maybe a better idea on, on, try it out. Let me know if it works. But for me, this is what's working and this is designed for you. So I want you guys to understand I'm going to do everything I can to link all of the stuff that I have on my kayak in the description. So if you guys are trying to figure out where I bought some of this stuff at, just go ahead, look in the description and I should have a link there for that. Um, if I don't, just comment below and I'll try my best to show you where I get it. Uh, a lot of these things are sort of non-kayak related items that I was able to fit out and make work for the kayak. So anyways, with that being said, let's jump into my native Titan 13.5 tournament series setup. All right guys, I'm pulling out the GoPro so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. Great autofocus. Anyways, let's dive into my setup here. Let's check this bad boy out. All right, here's a quick, quick little side view of the Native Titan 13.5. This is pretty much everything I have that I could put on a kayak. A little overview action here for you guys to see. All right, well, let's uh, dive into this thing, okay? So, start at the bow of the boat, we've got our um, yak power lights these things are great um, if you do have a motor on your kayak or you do put a motor on your kayak you will have to get it registered in order for you to get it registered you got to do a bunch of crap it's miserable here in pa but anyways uh, one of the things that you do have to have is nav lights just remember uh, red uh, like port wine almost um, it'll be on your port side and your greens on your starboard side so i got those linked up and they are super bright in the at night when obviously you need them um, and then when you put them on all you gotta do is drill them right in screw them in and they are pretty much watertight i mean they're you don't need anything else so <clears throat> getting into um the guts of the boat basically so what you see here is my power for the boat okay this is just a yak power box i'm sure you guys have run across it a few times I've got two cheap, <laughs> I believe these are, what are they? They're, I don't know, I'll put a link in the description. These things are from Amazon, but they're super cheap batteries. Lithium, uh, I think they're 18 amp that are in series, um, which is all I really ever need. Um, I'm just, I'm using this for my graphs and for my lights i've got some cockpit lights too i'll show you here in a second 
okay? Um, and then obviously I've got uh, that tied into my switch power system, which is the Yak power system as well. Um, and I'm utilizing this. This is something that uh, if you guys really want to get into, um, these do not come with the native watercraft. This is a separate purchase. This uh, sort of in tray, um, this bucket here, they do have them on nativewatercraft.com. You can go there and check them out. Um, these things, they're not very expensive, but they do a lot as far as just being able to hold your stuff. And then right here, I'll, I'll put my rain gear or something, or maybe if I've got some line, whatever, I, tools and things like that. All right, guys, so as you're seeing right here, this is my live scope. Uh, this is my power box for my live scope. This is the LVS 34. They just came out with a 36, but to be honest, if you're a bass fisherman, you really don't need a 36. That comes in handy if you're, you know, walleye and you're fishing real deep or you want the extended range into your live scope. I don't really need that. I just, just need live scope, okay? So that's my setup. And this little thing here, I'm going to get, I'm going to find a way to sort of attach that. I, I need to still, but it's been sitting there fine. Anyways, this is what I had sort of made. I bent this, uh, this plastic I, I picked up at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. And uh, you can just buy these things. I think this is an eighth inch sheet. And I actually just heated up this section, bent it so it would lean a little bit because if you put it straight up like that, these wires can get kinked from the lid. So anyways, that's that. All right, um, on the inside, it's gonna look like crap. <laughs> that's the inside and yeah, that's a uh, pure chaos right there, but it's an organized chaos. I've got pretty much everything tied together with uh, electrical tape and then all my connections are waterproof um, splice connections and I just taped them up just for, you know, extra protection. You don't really need it if you got waterproof sort of uh, heat shrinked um, splices. All right, making our way up a little bit further here. Um, I've got the, this right here is just something I put on. It's a little phone holder from uh, Ram Mounts. And uh, that's just when the wife calls and she wants to video time uh, or FaceTime me, I could just at least set that up and, and, and do that and still fish and pre-fish. Um, now here's your uh, 701 series propelled drive, um, integrated weed guard already on this thing. So this thing is pretty weedless um, and is, is, is a great drive to begin with pop this thing up <clears throat> if you are putting a motor on your kayak this is a must so native watercraft sells these as well and it's literally just a little plug okay and this plug just pulls in and out and what that does is that keeps water from being pushed up in if you were to look underneath let's see if I can do this if you were to look underneath it's pretty concave right here. And so what happens is water will get pushed here and will rise up and kind of sort of splash over. And obviously you want to try to keep as much water out of your boat as possible. Grab one of these bad boys. They're very inexpensive. But again, if you were to use a motor, get yourself one of these, okay? All right guys, so now I've got my foot pedals here. If you do have a motor, you're going to have to have foot pedals. I'm telling you what, it's just, it's a lifesaver and uh, makes the fish way better. Anyways, these are the uh, Select uh, foot pedals and this controls the, uh, this controls the actual Torquedo. I'll take you right back there so you can see. And how I put them on was just simple little self tappers that's all you really need there's some self tappers on and uh these things again they're great and uh, i've got the tubing that uh, this tubing pops out still I'll, I'll have to figure out how to get that to sit tight and stay in there but um, again it doesn't really bother me at all but anyways i've got some uh, irrigation tubing and uh, i've got that run all the way down under here and comes out right here okay and then i've got cordage ran through it into my torpedo um, eyelet mount 
eyelet here and then coming up into just these uh these are these night eye sort of clips these things are great and they're not going to bend on you that's all i use on these things night eyes okay that's my torquedo and setup i'll, I'll get in and talk about the bracket here in a second uh we'll keep going through <clears throat> there's my seat i've got uh two kayak cushions um obviously representing the river's edge and of course native watercraft and you don't need these things this this seat is probably the most comfortable seat in the kayak industry i'm not gonna lie it's up high as you can see that seat sits up pretty darn high and so is super comfortable easy to stand up and start fishing all that stuff all right getting into my graph here guys um this is the echo maps from garmin nine inch screen it's pretty much all i really need and everything power wise what i was talking about at the beginning that switch control system from uh yak power is i can control everything from my phone and so we'll back out a little bit here okay so here's the yak power app you just click on it at you got to make sure your bluetooth is running you turn it on and then you want this thing to turn on you can go ahead and that's both my graph and my uh, live scope box so now i'll be able to turn my garmin on and be ready to roll and how i've got my wires ran is i like to try to be as clean as possible these things are super important these are the yak attack um, through hole mounting wiring kits all right uh, again i'm going to have a link in the description for everything here but this thing uh, is lifesavers keeps water out never have any issues with them it is kind of scary whenever you are drilling into your kayak especially a one inch hole you got to use a one inch hole saw in order to to drill into it uh, but anyways that's that and i've got obviously all yak attack stuff here here is this is totally preference to you there's probably more negative outcome for this versus just having your live scope wire transducer mount wire um, I ran it inside my boat because I don't like wires exposed, okay? But majority of people I know, they want to be able to take this on and off from time to time, you know, depending on what they're doing. Uh, maybe they're fishing real shallow water rivers or something like that, and they don't need this, and they can pull this off. Unfortunately for me, I can't. I've, I've sort of just integrated into the boat, and it's just, it's in there. Now, this thing right here, these aren't big enough to hold this wire and so what i got was a um, this is from wilderness kayaks not to try to give them some um <clears throat> not to market for them but this thing here the reason why i had to use that is because the one inch opening here isn't wide enough to get the transducer plug into the boat so the next size up which was the wilderness ones i think it goes like an inch and three eighths or something like that but that um you have to secure underneath too and i'm not gonna lie i had my wife inside the kayak she literally crawled in was able to screw up the um the locking nut on the back side now getting into my live scope uh mount here this thing here i i cannot give you the name of it right now off the top of my head but i will have a link in the description for this bad boy my buddy john klein put me on and, and this thing is great i'm able to uh you know i've got this thing in perspective mode but if you want it in forward mode you can just drop it down this thing is awesome all right and you just use these tapes that they provide you to sort of link the uh the wire to it two inch uh ram ball mount and uh, all i want to do if i'm in shallow water i got to get this thing up what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and twist that thing loosens it up and i've got another yak attack paddle mount right here and I just kind of secure it that way. And it just sits right there until I'm ready to use it. When I'm ready to use it, I just pull it out, drop it down, tighten it up, and good to go. And I really don't need to spin this thing. You can spin your kayak any way you want. 
and you can face the fish. So as long as you got that sort of stationary, you're good to go. Another thing here I forgot to talk about is I am putting some, I put the Yak Power lights on the inside of my cockpit. So at night, it, um, I'm more illuminated. And um, if I'm sitting out there, and I'm changing up uh, lures or something like that, I've got light ready to go. But these are controlled by this switch right here and they turn right on. This is why I like the Yak Power switch system. Moving a little bit further back, we've got a, this comes stock. Um, this is your steering for your rudder system, but now for all 2023 boats will come integrated a spring-loaded rudder in the back, which absolutely makes this thing track so much better. And this thing is awesome for just steering. Okay, so that is come stock. All right, so I've got my Torquedo throttle here. All right, this I can control right from there. And this is just the 403 AC. And you're good to go. Um, quick tip, I've taken a carabiner on this thing. Hook this to your PFD, obviously, because this is your kill switch. You gotta have that. Um, but also, do not remove this from your PFD. You will lose it and you'll get out to the water and you'll have no power because you can't put on a kill switch. You can go to probably, I don't know, go to Dollar General and pick up maybe a magnet and might work in there. I've, I've heard people do that when they forgot these things, but just do yourself a favor, take these things and put them in your uh, PFD and don't remove it. Um, I've only got it removed just for this video. Anyways, coming back a little bit further, I got my sidekicks all installed. If I'm not utilizing my trailer, I'm using my sidekicks. I've got, um, you know, my spinner baits are sitting right here. I've got my boxes. These are the Plano. Actually, I think these are the spinnerbait boxes. I just took the guts out of them and just used them because they seem to fit better than any other box. Anyways, those are my plastics that I got in there. I've got, this is my Yak Gadget box. This is my pride and joy. This is something that I've kind of built up a little bit more. I put an extra two rod holders on the back. So I've got now eight rods that I can hold. I've got the Burley Pro organizers on both sides. And so that will hold either scent, um, spike it, uh, my fishing line, you know, my uh, leader line, all that stuff. I can just grab that real quick and start working on it. Um, as we make our way back now, just kind of a quick little thing. You guys should be utilizing the Bonafide Boss Bass Rods. That's what I got hooked in right now, all rigged up, ready to go. I was supposed to go fishing on the yacht today, but uh, lo and behold, this morning was a nasty thunderstorm. But anyways, I've, uh, I'm utilizing all Daiwa reels and uh, Suffix 832 braid, as well as Suffix advanced fluorocarbon on all my stuff. All right. Oh, you don't, don't see that bait. That's a, that's secret bait back there. Anyways, um, getting back to this bad boy. Now, this is something that a lot of people have been asking me about, and this is my mount that I made for the back. Now, I will say one of the issues you're going to run into is that if you are putting your torpedo motor on or your power pole on, the, 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 sort of the spots for them to put the screws into are not set up on the same pattern level as a torpedo or power pole. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to just find a way to make it work. And I'm not drilling a huge hole in here, okay? So what I've done is I've gone and I've gotten these, these spacers here from Lowe's um, and linked that in with, um, these are all waterproof or stainless steel. Um, I want to say they're quarter 20s, they're quarter 20 screws, washers. Um, and yeah, it works, it works. This board here, I will link the website as well on where I got this board. I've got it 
specially made. It was not expensive and it came pretty darn quick. I think it cost me maybe, I don't know, the board itself, probably about 50 bucks. Um, but there's a, there's a company, uh, marine store company that will make these for you. This is actually designed for like, if you want to build bait trays or something like that for like saltwater applications, but this is great. It's super tough, you know, polyurethane, polyethylene sort of material, man, this thing is super tough. Anyways, that's that. Uh, obviously my Torquedo, like I showed before, got utilizing the night eyes on all of my rigging. My cordage here, I'd use the thicker cordage. And uh, here's my power pole. My power pole, I was able to uh, get those in, drill those into the uh, the bracket back here. And of course, you know, I've got the, I've got the actual remote in my PFD. Going on the other side of the boat, I've got, you know, uh, you've got, a tool holder for your uh, your seat this thing's awesome i just leave my pliers in there i don't even need them until uh, or i don't take them out until i actually catch some uh, a fish so anyways that's great to have i've got an eyelet here uh, these you can pick these up on amazon i got the ball here to kind of just keep it from going through Another little stoppage here. This is actually, I believe this was provided by Native Watercraft, but there's other places online that you can get this little sort of cordage catch. All right, and so if I want to pick up my motor in the back, all I do is I pull this up, lock that into place, and I've got my motor picked up, especially if I'm going over either grass, because grass will, will eat up this motor. Um, or if I'm going real shallow or I'm picking up for the day, I've got that sort of tied in. Yeah, and of course, when you're ready to go, you just pull that out just like I did. You drop it right down, no problem whatsoever. All right, so then I got my Yak Attack paddle holder here. These things are great, check these out. I've got the uh, Bending Branches Angler Pro Carbon Fiber Super Light. And then right here as well, like I said before, uh, all the new 2023 boats are gonna be coming integrated with the drop-down rudder. And I'll show you that here in a second. This is, it's up right now. And all you gotta do is pull that out and drop this thing down. And your rudder will be dropped down like that. And this thing is awesome, makes your kayak steer and track so much better all right this is my my control okay it can steer and track so much better with that all right and it's back underneath the boat here I've got my transducer, all right? That's my transducer for my side and down scan imaging. And Native Watercraft made this super easy. They've got a plate right here that uh, you can just bolt any transducer to pretty much. You might have to do a little finagle, finagling sometimes, but beyond all that, yeah, it's super easy to get a transducer under here. And I ran this through I ran that through into another um, another one inch uh, through hole wiring kit from Yak Attack. And no, you don't get water in here. The water, if the water does come up through here, it comes over this lip. It does not does not go against gravity. Okay, I don't know. Some people do that or talk about that. That is legit right there. I bring that up and boom. And again, you don't see any wires, especially when your uh, your cover is on. And of course, I drop my drive right on down. No issues, does not run in, into the drive. You put that in, do your thing. 
So that's pretty much it for the native watercraft Titan 13.5. That's my setup. That's how I've got everything run. Again, you guys should be able to find all the stuff that I have on it in, uh, I'll, you'll find a link in the description. Okay. So anyways, just a quick extra thing. I've got my trailer here and this trailer is uh, my buddy ended up He's a, an amazing welder, Coy Scott. If you guys want to get a hold of him, uh, he can hook you up. He's a great welder, and he welded me up. This is, used to be a double jet ski trailer, and we just sort of gutted it and uh, put everything on. We've got it wired up. Um, if you are a travel fisherman, I do suggest getting yourself locking um, locking pins for your trailer so no one takes your trailer. You know, same thing for, get yourself a locking hitch right here. So no one steals your stuff when you're away. That would stink, right? Anyways, coming back to the trailer. This is pretty much it. It's all set up. Um, put some stickers on here. As you can see, these bad boys at nighttime when you're backing up. Got it wired up with just a simple um, wiring kit from Royal King, Lowe's, whatever. Anyways, I've got my Yakima box here. This thing is awesome, holds about, I don't know, eight rods comfortably, any more than that. Things get a little jumbled up inside. Uh, it's about eight foot long. I think your max rod is gonna be about seven and a half to eight foot. Anyways, if you're using any longer than that, you need to find a way to break it down. But that's my trailer and I've got it just sitting. My kayak itself will sit on it flat like that. I've got these little eyelet bolts here on both ends and I've got ratchet straps that'll just strap right over top, right over top, right over top. And that makes it super easy. The only thing I do suggest, the native watercraft Titan, the, the hull, the reason why it's such a stable hull is because it's it has sort of this concave to it, which makes it really difficult to sit on trailers that have bunks. So I don't have bunks on there because of that reason. But I will say, when you strap these things down, it does kind of bend a little bit in the hall. You know, just make sure that when you're sitting, you're not doing anything, or you got to sit in your garage, make sure you unstrap these things so you take the less stress off of your hall of your kayak. All right, well, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, so that is it for the Native Titan 13.5. That's my setup, my tournament setup. Whenever I get out on water, this is what I got that helps me be able to pull in more fish and just obviously fish more comfortably and inevitably more happy. Anyways, the Native Titan is an incredible boat, super stable, super comfortable. If you guys are interested in getting your very own Native Titan, make sure you check out your local Native Watercraft dealer. If you're having trouble finding that, make sure you go to nativewatercraft.com and it should link you to wherever you need to be. So with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys get out on the water and get yacked. Thanks for watching Straight Yacked.